Hi, I'm Nathan with Holston Gases. In this training module, we're going to discuss how to set up the basic MIG system and also list the consumables that make up the MIG gun. We're going to start with the MIG gun. So for our MIG gun, we have a gooseneck. This right here is the gooseneck. We have our handle. We have our trigger switch, strain relief, welding cable, which is part of the gun. On the other side of the gun, we have our power pin with two O-rings to seal the gas from the wire drive assembly and our electrical connector. And that's basically it. That makes up our MIG gun. The following parts on the table are the most widely replaced consumables of the MIG welding gun. First, we have our gas nozzle. We have our contact tip. And we have our gas diffuser, okay? Next is the liner. The liner goes inside of the gun. Now that we've talked about the parts that make up the MIG gun, let's talk about the parts that make up the wire drive system. On this machine, we have several parts, and the first one we're going to point out is the inlet guide. Right here is the inlet guide. Next you have your tension knob. This is your tension arm. This is the knob that tightens the gun inside the wire, drop, the, the wire block housing. And this is your gas line, bringing in the gas into the wire drive housing. Okay. Next is a drive roll. The drive roll is mounted right here and there are several different types of drive rolls. We have three different types of drive rolls. First being a V-grooved, we have a V-knurled, and a U-grooved. V-grooved drive rolls are used for hard wires like solid stainless steel or solid carbon steel wire. Next is a V-knurled drive roll. V-knurled drive rolls are used for cord wire like metal core or flux core. And then lastly is a U-groove drive roll. The U-groove drive roll are used for soft wire, such as copper or aluminum. Since we're using solid wire, we're going to use a V-groove drive roll. And also you'll notice that there's different sizes. It's important to use the appropriate size drive roll for the size wire that's being used. If you're using an O35 wire, then you should use an O35 drive roll. In some cases, drive rolls have two sides a large size and a small size. So it's important to make sure that if you're using an O35 wire, that O35 is displayed on the outside of the drive roll. And it is right here, so we're going to snap it in place just like so. The next area we're going to look at are the output terminals. All welding machines have two output terminals, a positive and a negative. In this case, the positive terminal is connected to the wire drive assembly or the gun. The negative terminal is hooked to the work clamp. This is known as electrode positive or reverse polarity. You can also hook the welding machine up to electrode negative or straight polarity. To do so, you'll take the lead that's hooked to the wire drive assembly or the gun and hook it to the negative terminal and take the, the work clamp lead and hook it to the positive terminal. This is known as electrode negative or straight polarity. The only time that you'll be using this if you're using a gasless flux core wire. To have a good understanding of all the consumables that go on the MIG gun, we can start installing the consumables. We're going to start with the liner. The liner threads into the back of the MIG gun. We're going to thread it all the way through the gooseneck. Make sure you lay the gun out straight on the floor so it feeds smoothly. Once you're getting close to the end of the liner, you're going to notice that it's going to start giving you a little resistance, and when this happens, start feeding it in small sections so you don't kink the liner. If you kink the liner, then you will need to replace the liner with a new one because this liner will be ruined. Then we tighten it up, finger tight, and then hit it with a crescent wrench to tighten it all the way down. Now that a liner is installed in the gun, we are ready to install the gas diffuser. Notice that this liner has already been pre-cut. Most liners out of the package are not pre-cut and we have to cut them to the appropriate length. To do that, what I'd like to do is I'd like to take the gas diffuser and size it up next to the gooseneck threads and then kind of eyeball to see how long do I need to cut the excessive length of the liner so that the liner will fit firmly all the way up as far as it'll go in the gas diffuser when it's threaded on. So in this case, it looks like it needs to be cut to where the liner is sticking out about a three quarters of an inch. And before I cut it, I'm going to press the liner in as far, far as it'll go so that I am sure that I'm not cutting it too long, too short. So once I have it pressed in, then I size it up, and then I'll cut it with some cutting wire cutters. And then we're ready to thread the diffuser on to the gooseneck threads.
once I have it finger tight, we'll take a crescent wrench and then firm it all the way. It's important for all the consumables to be installed very tight. The next thing to do is to thread the wire through the gun onto the machine. We'll do this before we install the contact tip. To install the MIG gun in the machine, we're going to slide it in the front of the machine until it's seated all the way back firmly into the wire drive assembly. Once it's firmly seated, we're going to tighten this knob up until it's tight. It's very important to make this connection very tight. Sometimes the gun will want to back out on you. This is especially true with larger wire drive systems where after you start feeding, the pressure of the O-rings inside the gun is going to start pushing it out. And this will cause a gas leak and cause the, the wire to bird nest on you. So it's important to get it shoved in there firmly and then tighten it down very tight. Now that our MIG gun is installed, we can install the electrical connector onto the front of the welding machine or wire feeder. We're going to make the keyway up, press it in, and slightly turn the locking ring until it locks in place. Now we're ready to install a spool of wire onto the wire feeder. To do so, we're going to align the hole on the back of the spool of wire up to the nipple on the hub assembly. We're going to hold the wire and thread it into the inlet guide, across the drive roll, and into the liner. Once it's in place, we're going to drop the tension arm and install the tension knob. The last thing we'll do is we'll install the hub nut. <clears throat> now we're ready to set drive roll tension. Now that our wire has been ran all the way out to the end of the gun, we can install the contact tip. The contact tip will thread through the wire and then screw right into the gas diffuser like this. It's important that the right contact tip is used for the right size wire. If you're using an 035 wire, then it's important to use an 035 contact tip. Once our contact tip is finger tight, we're going to finish it off with a little snug from the welders. Now we're ready to install our gas nozzle. The gas nozzle will just slide right over the gas diffuser, and in some cases the gas nozzle screw onto the gas diffuser. But now our MIG gun is completely assembled. Now that we got the wire installed on the machine, now we need to set the drive roll tension. And to do that, we're going to feed the wire out of the gun onto a non-conductive surface like this wood table. And you notice how the wire drive roll is slipping. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten the tension knob until it starts feeding smoothly. Now you notice it's feeding onto the table without slipping. This tells us that our drive roll tension is correct. Now it's important not to over tighten the drive roll as this can cause damage to the drive motor and cause a premature failure. Also, if you do have to tighten the drive roll uh, tension knob uh, tighter than normal, that would lead you to believe that there's possibly a, a kinked liner or a worn liner, bad contact tip, or possibly a, a worn drive roll. Now we're ready to install the gas, and to do that we're going to install the cylinder. We're going to secure it to the wall or to the running gear, remove the cylinder cap, and install the flow meter regulator. When installing the flow meter, we want it to be installed vertically. Once it's installed in place, we'll tighten it down with the crescent wrench. And we want the flow tube to sit vertical. Next, we are going to install the gas hose to the bottom of the flow meter. And notice we're not using any Teflon tape for this connection. Snug down the fitting with the wrench. Now we want to install the gas hose into the back of the wire feeder, right into the inlet of the solenoid valve. And notice that we did not use any Teflon tape on this connection. Then we'll snug it down with the wrench. Now that our gas lines are installed, we can set the flow rate on our flow meter. To do so, we will release the tension arm on the drive rolls 
pull the trigger to activate the gas solenoid and adjust the knob on the flow meter to approximately 30 CFH. There are many different flow rates for different applications, but a good starting point is 30 CFH. We are now ready to weld, and that concludes this training module. In this module, we discussed how to set up a basic MIG welding power system along with the basic consumables in a MIG welding gun. I hope you have found this information helpful, and thank you for watching.